Yo, what's going on guys? It's Ain't on Mycology. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create liquid culture base and how to inoculate your liquid culture base with selected genetics, allocating you limitless culture syringes for future cultivation. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is select a clean and disinfected area away from fans and any dust particles or contamination that might fly up into the air. I'm going to go ahead and sterilize your area. You can use a bleach solution or just wipe it down with ISO. Here you can see I'm using just Clorox wipes because I got them at the dollar store. You can see I'm wearing my sterile nitrile gloves and I'm choosing to make sure I wipe my hands down with isopropyl alcohol. This is just 91% isopropyl alcohol. You can get this at Walmart pretty cheap. Here I'm going to start by measuring out 15 grams of corn syrup. You can see my modified lids here. I have two holes drilled. One is a self-healing silicone injector port and the other is a two micron filter. The two micron filter is good to fight against contamination and airborne contamination that is, but once you put it into the pressure cooker, steam can still get in there. So that's something to note for later. You can see here I'm going over and I'm going to go ahead and wipe out the inside of this jar with some rubbing alcohol. And I'm using toilet paper here only because, you know, paper towels are expensive and the amount that you're going to use in this hobby, it, it just, it's just worth it to use toilet paper. You can buy it in bulk and it's easier. I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the excess alcohol here with my wipe. You really want to be as sterile as possible here. I mean, you're you're creating an environment for bacteria and a micro microclimate that could very easily be contaminated with competitors. You can see here I'm tearing my scale and I'm measuring out 15 grams of corn syrup. This is just caro like corn syrup. And they all have vanilla in it, so don't worry about that. And my reasoning for this is this is the nutrients that the mushrooms are going to eat off of. You can see in this example I um. I did, of course, use a little bit more than 15, which is okay. If you, as long as you're not, you know, filling the entire thing with corn syrup, your culture will do fine. You just don't want it to get smothered by the amount of nutrients that are in there. You can see here, I'm a, I'm a little bit messy, so I go ahead and clean up the the excess corn syrup around the edge here and a little bit on the rim of the uh, glass. Once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my scale and place this back for future endeavors. I'm going to go ahead and fill up my mason jar with 300 milliliters of water, which if you're using the smaller mason jar like I am, is about 75% full. And you can see now, this is our mixture. This looks pretty nice. This is pretty clean. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab um, a rock, a pebble, a marble, or anything that's, I mean, you know, not inherently dirty. You're going to end up sterilizing it anyway, but I prefer to use just these little rocks. You can get them at, you know, pretty much any crystal place or even a dollar store, really. I mean, they're just, they're just rocks. You can use one from outside, too. And this is because you want to make sure you're able to stir around the, um, the mixture that you have here. The reason you want to do this before you go ahead and pressure sterilize is because if you don't do this, most of the corn syrup is going to be on the bottom and it's going to kind of caramelize and harden when you put it inside of the pressure cooker in high temperatures. Um, the next step here is going to be to pressure sterilize this at 15 psi for 90 minutes. Um, I made sure to put tin foil over the top of it as well just to make sure that the water doesn't get inside of it. I'm going to show you the next part here. Which I've mixed this around. See, this is after I've fully pressure sterilized the, the jar. Again, most pressure sterilizing um, and pressure cookers, they pretty much go with the, the same temperature for most of them. So you can kind of just set it to 90 minutes to sterilize and you're pretty much good here. And kind of make sure that I let the, the mist come out and I go ahead and take the culture right out here. You can see there's the tin foil I was talking about. And that's the thing I was talking about earlier with the 2 micron filter, is it, like I said before, with the tin foil it protects the steam from going in there and filling up the jar more than we want it to. And that's kind of a big issue I was dealing with before, just make sure you don't keep the jars inside of the pressure cooker for too long after it's done, otherwise the bottom of the, the glass may crack and uh, come off very cleanly. It won't explode, but it'll just come off very cleanly, almost like a you know a pressurized um, slice. So just you know be very careful here. 
next step is going to be the inoculation. You can see here, I have my, um, my room temperature culture. You want to make sure that you really let that cool the room temperature. If your culture is too hot, you could potentially, um, you know, destroy your genetics. And it's something you really don't want to have to deal with, especially in this stage, because this is very early on in development. You haven't even started with your spawn yet. It's just a culture. So I'm going ahead in here and I'm some of the condensation from underneath the tin foil is still there, so I'm just gonna wipe that off and be as clean as possible. I've now got my rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of that on top of the toilet paper I have here. And this is gonna be useful for later, and you'll see why. I'm gonna start by taking off the tip of my um my Yeti syringe. This is, you know, a mushroom culture. <laughs> Not how much I'm allowed to say on YouTube, but it is a mushroom culture. You can see here I'm going ahead and um, taking out my, my syringe tip here. Some people say that these are pretty sterile right out the, the, the box in the package, but I do like to flame sterilize. And I've seen people using a lighter. That's, you don't want to use a lighter. If I catch you using a lighter, I, I will slap you. And, and I mean that because you're going to leave black marks on the tip of your... Um, of your syringe and that could lead to contamination because of the, the decarboxylates that are kind of going through your culture as it passes through the syringe tip. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the self-healing silicone injection port with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And I like to mist this around and kind of wave my hand in front of it to let the alcohol dry up. And by the time that's done, your syringe should be cooled down. It's a very thin piece of metal. It'll cool down very quickly. Go ahead and inject that there. And I'm going to squirt an entire 10cc into this. And this is what you would get if you ordered a culture from my Discord server or any other verified culture website. So I put my finger over the slot as I pull the needle out to make sure that I can seal it. I mean, it's supposed to be self-sealing, but I like to, just for precautionary measures. And then I go ahead and wipe it down with a little bit of iso alcohol, just to be 100% sure here. We want to be very careful. Going to go ahead and fan it a little bit more. Now I'm going to go ahead and, you know, label my jar. And once this is labeled, I'm going to go ahead and mix this around and stir the hell out of it. And you're going to want to make sure you take this out and stir this once a day. You're going to leave this here for, some of them are a couple of weeks, but some of them might also be a couple of months. It depends. Your culture is ready to be put into different syringes or even taken out because I like to store mine in the fridge until I'm ready to grab a syringe and suck more juice out of it. And your syringes can be utilized, and this, this culture can be utilized when you haven't stirred it around yet in the daytime and you see that it, the jar is about half full with fuzzies and this culture solution as it grows, it's gonna eat the, the corn syrup. Once it's about half full, at settled, um, you know that it's, it's ready to put in the fridge and date that for eight months. And the cool thing about this is you can infinitely clone this and you can really do this as, as much as you want. Um, like let's say that you date it for eight months or you don't use it all, or in this case you do use it all, there's not really much else you have to do. And there it is right there. And there's the final product. You can just simply, like let's say you use all the culture. Instead of going and buying more culture, you can simply use your culture syringe to then inoculate more culture instead of going and buying another culture syringe from somewhere this is very similar to the infinite mush tech that abrazoo 15 created on the shroomery website and the forums if you haven't heard about the shroomery forums if you're into cultivation they have pretty much every answer and question that's ever been asked in the history of mushroom cultivation they've been going since 1997 um it's pretty crazy stuff and this is clone tech basically so you have an infinite amount of mushrooms from one mushroom culture syringe that's all you need to know um i'm going to be doing another video soon on how to take your liquid culture and spawn that into bulk tech and i'm going to be doing popcorn for my grain spawn and teaching about popcorn tech because personal opinion i think popcorn's the best grain um i hope this video helped you guys if you guys are fucking with the mycology stuff go ahead and give me a subscribe hit the thumbs up and check out the discord server in the description i love you guys